right, welcome to Technique Tuesday. I'm showing you the photo. I'm gonna be scrapbooking today, uh, but today the main focus is gonna be these two products and using them to create a fun background. I'm gonna be playing with the brand new Market Square collection from Maggie Holmes today. And I'm gonna be showing with you how to make a fast and easy background on a dark paper. So in scrapbooking, you will find that you can find all shapes, sizes, colors, patterns, well, maybe not shapes and sizes, but colors and patterns in our collections. And sometimes you get a gorgeous paper like this one that has a really dark background. So I'm gonna show you a really quick and easy way to create a resting spot in the middle of a dark background that allows you to place your photo and embellishments on. Now, this video is in real time, which means it really did take me just this long to do it. You can see I don't have it sped up at all. I did this on purpose to really show you how quick this is. I am using golden acrylic paint and the color I'm using is titanium white from the shop. This acrylic palette paint is on the thicker side, which we definitely need for this. And this amazing tool that I am using is called a catalyst wedge. You can also find these in the shop. So this is just a really easy way to get a lot of paint on a 12 by 12 background paper quickly. So you just put the paint on that little wedge. It holds a lot of paint and then you just use it the way you would use any kind of um, spatula or palette knife. Uh, but the difference is number one, it will hold a lot of paint, way more paint than a paintbrush. Um, so that gives you a really, you have a lot of control over how thick or how thin the paint goes onto your paper. Another really great thing about this is that it holds a lot. So it's really wide. It's like, let me see, four inches wide. So three swipes will get you uh, 12 inches of paint. <laughs> it is super easy and fun to use. I really, really like this tool. It kind of changes your, it's a game changer for me. At least it was for me. Like it's just, it's really easy. So you can see how I'm just spreading it. I'm kind of creating a block here. I still want some of that dark background to show. I want it to contrast nicely off of that back black background or that really dark background, but I want to make sure I'm giving myself enough room to place my photo, to place my journaling, um, a little bit of embellishments. I put one nice layer of the acrylic paint onto my background. You can see it's not completely opaque and you could stop here, but I know that I'm doing a heritage photo. I know that my background papers or the embellishments I'm using are more heritage. They're a little sepia toned or cream toned. So let's add some color to our next layer. You can see here I have Shea Butter Reinker from Catherine Puller. Now, you don't want this to be too much. So we're gonna do one drop of this at a time. So we're gonna add one drop of the reinker. And then we're gonna take this little palette knife and kind of smoosh it around, get it in there. You can add as much or as little of the reinker as you like to your acrylic paint. Just know this, you need to start with a very dark, very thick, not dark, very thick acrylic paint. So when you buy a white acrylic paint, you want the thickest, the thickest titanium white you can get. You do not want something that's thin if you're going to add color to it because every time you put a drop of that color onto your acrylic paint, the paint will get thinner and more watery. Another thing you'll notice is that even though it looks like I'm adding a ton, you know, a lot of color because that ink comes out so, so kind of concentrated, once you mix it in, we're doing it, you're going to end up with something that's very, very light. So you can kind of see here, as I mix this together, we're just changing the color of our paint subtly. It's not going to be very dramatic. You can do it dramatic. Just remember that with every drop of ink, Reinker you put into that 
acrylic paint, the acrylic paint is going to get thinner. I think at the end of the day, I use four drops, maybe five. And then I just mixed it till I had something that had a nice creamy sepia tone to it. I love this technique because it gives you a color of paint that you probably wouldn't necessarily uh, purchase or buy you know when we buy acrylic paint we want something we always kind of look at the color and we always get this very vibrant I like a more subtle acrylic paint background I like a tinted acrylic paint not a colored acrylic paint so the way that you achieve that kind of nice light just a hint of color is by adding a reinker to your titanium white for me, titanium white acrylic paint is a go-to mixed media element. You can do so much with it. You can add so much to it and it just, it's a really nice medium. If you have, if you're interested in starting with mixed media and you're just not sure where to begin, begin with a tube of titanium white acrylic paint. It is the best stepping stone and it's something you can always come back to. The other interesting thing about this is that, did you know that gesso is just watered down acrylic, white acrylic paint? That's all it is. So if you want to add more on top of your background, you can. You could add watercolor, you could add splatters, you can add whatever you want. Uh, not only are we creating a gorgeous background here, but we are also creating a background that we can layer other wet mediums on top of and it will protect the paper underneath. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, this is just a great beginner's mixed media product. So as you can see here, you can kind of see the difference between the white, white acrylic and then that nice kind of creamy color we created. Once you're finished and you're happy, you want to let this dry thoroughly, put it underneath a heavy book for a little bit uh, after it's dry. So dry it, put it under a heavy book overnight, and then you'll have a nice flat background that you can then build your layout on. So there's our layout. I'm just gonna add some finishing touches to my page here with you on camera. I did the bulk of it off camera because I really wanted to keep the real time creation of the background into my video. I didn't want to speed it up. I wanted you to really be able to see that it really only took start to finish eight, nine minutes for me to create this background. And then once it was, and then once I had it dry, I could just create my layout exactly as I wanted it. Couple of things of note when you are putting, um, Things like pattern paper, die cuts, stickers, they will often need a little bit of extra wet adhesive. Tape runners, uh, dry adhesives do not tend to like to stick to acrylic paint. So you want to make sure that the glue you're using is a nice wet glue. My favorite is Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive, but of course a Scotch Tacky glue would work. Any type of glue that you really like and use and have in your craft room, but you do want a wet adhesive. You can see there how I'm even putting that wet adhesive on the back of the already sticky stickers because I know they're just not gonna stick. So I have here my matted photo, my title, a little bit of journaling, and then I've just added some of the die cuts and stickers from the Market Square collection. Again, very quick and easy background, but doesn't it look so, so pretty? I love how that creamy painted background looks like with my heritage photo and my products. I love how you can still see that nice, dark, stark background. It kind of pops. It's really giving um, a nice feel to the layout. You're not losing that dark pattern paper uh, because you painted over it for sure. You still have a lot of it there uh, to take a look at. So my color palette for this particular page was pulled directly from that large floral sticker that I just placed down. I am adding a bit of more dimension to some of these elements with some foam tape. 
And uh, if you feel when your paper, when your background is completely dry, should you feel that the paper is too thin, if it feels like it might rip a little bit, go ahead and just grab another sheet of thin white cardstock and adhere it to the back of the pattern papers. I know um, American Crafts pattern papers in particular have gotten a lower weight and thinner recently. So uh, I would definitely recommend if this dries completely and you feel like it's too, it feels like it's too thin, go ahead and just put a little bit of white cardstock on the back of it. That's what I did here. I used uh, some tear tape and just put an extra sheet of white cardstock behind the pattern paper just to bulk it up a little bit so I knew it was stable and would be stable in my album. And here is my finished project. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope I have been able to teach you a fast and easy, fun background that you can try at home with your own craft supplies. If you've never tried mixed media, you will find the links to the titanium white acrylic paint and the Catherine Pooler ink refill I used and the Catalyst tool uh, down in the description box below. Have a fabulous day and I will see you all again very soon. Bye.